front page, Lama Zion, for those who are using a print that has paragraphs, it's paragraph Memches 48. Omra Seicha, remember now the Ramchal has told us yesterday and the day before that we have some very general ideas about Yichud, God's uniqueness, Echad, Yochid, Umiyuchad. We have some concepts about we never talk about God, we don't know what his essence is, we only talk about Pu'uloso, things that God does that we can see and understand. And we infer back from there that since this happened and everything only happens by God's will, God not only will this, but God has the ability and the power to do this. And of course, how much ability does he have? I have no idea. I can't even talk about it because to talk about it would be derogatory as we talked about and the Gemara talks about. And we talked about other general principles that Ramchal said, now we're ready to get into particulars about how the Rabbanu Shalom administers the world. And administering the world comes into two time frames. There's the time before the Gilui Hayichud, the revelation of God's uniqueness, and the, the time when that revelation occurs. And in between those two bookends, before the revelation and the revelation is the world we live in, in which we're trying to bring the world closer to that revelation of God's uniqueness of his ultimate sovereignty over the whole world. Again, I remind everybody that this all begins on the sixth day of creation with Adam Arishon. You need to keep that in your mind as we learn this. Adam Arishon had a Nesoyim. He was tested by God. The Rabbana Shalom said to Adam Arishon, you can eat whatever you want from here, but don't eat from the eight sadas, tov, vora, good and bad. Don't eat from this tree. So if you eat from the day you eat from this tree, your life will end, you will die. We need to bear in mind as we go and continue today and for the rest of the Sefer that we're dealing here in this world with trying to go to, to rectify, to fix that moment in history that occurred on the sixth day of creation. The Rona Shalom explained to Adam Harisha, I want you to understand that there's something called good and there's something called bad. And conceptually, I want you to understand it. And God's saying, I want you to believe me. I want you to trust me. This is good for you. This is bad for you. You can do this, but you can't do this. And what I'm telling you is objective truth. And if you don't listen to me and you test me, your life will come to an end. Your life will come to an end is not of necessity some punishment. Your life will come to an end is a consequence of what you have done. We gave the marshal many times. A person... Uh, for whatever reason, sticks his hand in a fire. His hand is terribly burnt, and he looks up at God and says, God, why did you burn my hand? God didn't burn your hand. didn't do anything. God made a rule, a chasius he made voracious, that a fire is hot and it can burn flesh. You decided to put your hand in a fire, and now you're complaining to God. What are you complaining to God for? You put your hand in a fire. A person drinks bleach. And then he complains that his insides have been burned out. The reason that there's a skull and bones on a bottle of bleach is to tell you that it's poison. You decided to drink it. What do you want from the Vagnishlam? Yeah, the Vagnishlam created all the chemicals. And the fact that these chemicals, when they interact, God made a rule that they can burn the insides of a person, but you picked it up and drank it yourself. The Shlomo Melech says in Mishle, A person makes his own wrong decisions, and then he has consequences for those decisions. Then he looks up at heaven and says, God, why did you do this to me? What do you mean, why I do this? I told you not to do these things. If you had trusted me, this would have not happened. If I tell you, don't put your hand in the fire, don't put your hand in the fire. You want to test it. You want the experience. So you put your hand in the fire. Then don't scream at me. I told you it's right. I told you it's bad. So at the point of the Eitz Hadas Tovarah, the Rosh Hashanah is giving Adam a simple lesson. 
There is tov in the world, there's ra in the world. And now I want you to understand it in your kepala, and I want you to be able to live a good, healthy life. Do this and don't do this. If you do this, it'll be by your own free choice, and the result is your life will end. I have, I, I'm not doing it. I'm just telling you, stay away from this. At that moment, other Mauritian only had a concept. He understood that Ra is something that God told him not to do. He never experienced Ra. He never experienced the consequence of Ra. It was all an idea that God created and told him, I want you to know that there is Ra in the world. Right now it's conceptual for you. And leave it in your Kepala. Don't experience it. The Nahash came to Adam and said, eh, could be yes, could be no, maybe. And then he says to Adam Marishan, what Rashi tells us, <clears throat> the Nahash tells Adam, Chava, because listen, how did God create you? How did God create the world? Where did God get all this wisdom from? Because he ate from that tree. It's the Eitz Hadas Tovara. It's Eitz Hadas. God that created you ate from that tree. And now, because he doesn't want competition, he tells you, you can do whatever you want here in the Gan Eden. You can eat whatever you want, but do not eat from that tree. You know why he told you not to eat from that tree? Because there's only competition. If you eat from that tree, you'll be a God. You don't have to listen to him. That's why he told you not to eat from the tree. Give it a bite. Give it a test at least. Experience it. See if, <clears throat> see if God is making you into a personal slave. Today, slavery is a concept. Big mice said today. Slavery, anti-slavery. Let's check it out. Is God making you a slave? And that's why he says you can't eat from this tree because if you ate from the tree, you'll be God too. And he doesn't want you to be God. He wants you to be a slave. Let's say, take a bite and see what happens. Let's experience the rock. And he experiences the Ra. And he opens up now a Pandora's box called, instead of having Ra as an idea in the Kepala, he now has Ra in his life. And his life is going to cease at some point, 930 years later. His life is going to come to an end because he ate from the bleach or he put his hand in the fire. At that moment, had Odom Harishan said to the Nachash, leave me alone. I'm not listening to you. My creator, the sovereign, the Echad Yochad Yucha, taught me the objective truth. You're just here to test me, and I'm going to pass this test. Get out of here. Leave me alone. I don't need to experience Ra. If God told me it's Ra, it is Ra, and I'm not getting involved. Other Mauritian's decision was to experience it. And therefore... He took a tremendous step backwards in the Gili Hayicha. And other Mauritians said to the Nahash, get away. God is the sovereign. He's the only objective truth. I'm not putting my hand in the fire. He would have left Ra as a concept and never experienced it. And I would have been the Gili Hayicha. Walk away. Get away. There's only one sovereign with the objective truth. But he decided that maybe not the sovereign. Maybe not objective truth. Maybe I need to experience this. And he gave the Gila Yichud a kick in such a way that he opened up the whole world to a Pandora's box of Ra. And that's what we've been trying to do for 5,780 years. Now, from here domain, we should complete the job. The Gila Yichud, for ourselves and for the world. That the world should understand, they should understand that God's the sovereign, he runs the world. And you can't change the way he wants to run the world. He's not a mukra. He's not required to do anything. He does what he wants, when he wants, how he wants. But as a result of what happened on that sixth day, a tekufa, a period of human history, opened up that's called Helem Yichud Hashem. The Yichud Hashem is now nisale. It's hidden. You have to go find it. You have to go investigate it. You need to now study it because the Pandora's box of evil has been open for all kinds of human experiences. And people keep on experiencing things. We know that there are things that kill us. 
you can't get any bigger sign than the one that they put on cigarettes. They put it in the stores, they put it on the cigarette uh, boxes itself. This will kill you, all kinds of lashinas. And people want to experience it. And people say, yeah, it killed him, not going to kill me. I have a better, I have better lungs, I have better, all, ki all kinds of stuff. And a person knows he's putting his hands in the fire. He knows he's, he's drinking bleach and he wants to experience it. Maybe it's not going to happen to me. And that's the pinnacle Yetzirah. Yes, it's evil, but you should test it. Give it a test. Maybe it's not so evil. And maybe there won't be consequences. Who knows? Because it happened to him, maybe it won't happen to you. Give it a try. It looks pretty nice. It looks pretty desirable. Give it a try. And every time a person falls to that, we give the yichud in our lives and in the world a push backwards. And every time a person rejects that kind of thought, he pushes the yichud forward for himself and for the world. So right now, with the chet of the Eitz Hadas Tovarah by Oda Marishan, and that's what we have on page Lamed Zayin in the bold print, to Kufas Helem Yichud Hashem, the period of history during which the yichud Hashem is now hidden. We have to find it because it's now been covered up through all kinds of averis and all kinds of experiences that man has decided are worthwhile. Amra Seichel, Ramchal says, the Seichel says to Neshama, Hasman Arishan Sheishmonu Levayar Ata, the first period of human history that is that we're up to explaining right now, Husman Es Alam Yehudi Yisbar Kayom Hazeh, is the period of time in which God's Yichud is hidden as it is today. Ramchal is writing this in the 1700s, and the, the Helam Hayich has been going on since the sixth day of creation, that moment with other Mauritian, and it continues through today. And it is this, during this period of time, before the revelation of the Yichud, that human beings have an opportunity to do Avodah. We have an opportunity in Avodah Hashem. All Avodah Hashem, whether it's your learning, whether it's your shaking of a lulah, whether it's eating matzah, putting on your tzitzis, your trillin, keeping Shabbos, putting up mezuzah, taras hamishpacha, these are all mitzvos, and of course learning Torah is learning Torah, but the source, the foundation for all of this is by learning Torah, and by doing mitzvahs, we bring about the gili ha'yichud. By learning Torah, we're supposed to get a better understanding of the yichud of the Rebbe that he's the sovereign, that he's the objective truth of the world, that the mitzvahs in the, in the Torah are the objective truth. What HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells you to do is healthy for you. What HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells you not to do is not healthy for you. Physically, spiritually, it's the Eitz Hadas Tovra. The Eitz Hadas Tovra is just a marshal. The Eitz Hadas Tovra could be Chaza, is an Eitz Hadas Tovra. Let me give a taste to this cheeseburger. Let me see what it tastes like. Eitz Hadas Tovra. Let me give the following a little taste. Let's see how, what, it, what it feels like. And the Rosh Hashanah says, don't do it. Eitz Hadas Tovra. The experiential idea. I want to experience that which God said, don't do its bleach, is the Eitz Hadas Tovra. And this is the period that we're living in where there's a helim of the yichud, because if God was completely revealed, if there was no helim of yichud, nobody would do any averis at all. You'd be no bechir. And we're coming to that world. The, the Gemara in Sukkah on Daf Nun Beis tells us, we went out from Sukkah, we talked about this at great length a week or two ago. The world, according to Chazal, has an expiration date, the year 6,000. The year 6,000, absolutely done, Mashiach is coming. And with that, Bechira ends, Yitzhahara ends, and we're now into a period called the, the beginning period of Yichud. Now, this is the period of time during which, no, it's not a marshal. It's an expiration date. 6,000 years or 6,000 years, and the Gemara breaks it down into two, four, six. The first 2,000 years of the world, the world is called Tohu. The second 2,000 years of the world is called uh, Torah. And uh, from 4,000 to 6,000 is called Yimos HaMashiach. So that is something that uh, Ramchal 
certainly takes literally. And then from that point forward, uh, we're moving to a completely different world. So this is the period of time, post Chet Odom Harisha. And today, where we're working on doing the Gili Hayyidah. Certainly, as we know, the Rav Shalom could have created a perfect world. In a perfect world, all human beings are perfect. Everyone's collecting lollipops because no one can do anything wrong because we're all robots. And God could have done that because he's a perfect God. But God's God created a perfectly imperfect world so that we can have a place to do avoda and get schar. Otherwise, there'd be no schar at all for being a robot. Am number it's also lesnag in nevor ban haga zayshik razachanu in a himzi seida chodesh mamish. But when the rebbeinu shalom willed that he wanted to run a world in a system that included Hatava, which we learned at the beginning of the Sefer. The Baal Shalom wanted to be made it. He wanted to do good things for creation. So the Baal Shalom created a, a whole system Chadash. None of this existed before. The whole idea of evil never existed. When God willed the world into being, along with the world into being through the six days where there is sun, moon, plants, animals, birds, human beings. God also created ideas, as we've talked about many times. All ideas were created. Somebody wakes up this morning, has a tremendous idea, and he wants to call it the Pythagorean theorem, and it's an unbelievable idea, and it actually works. I don't know how it works, but there are mathematicians that know how it works, and they can prove it back and forth. Absolutely true. Pythagorean's idea was there long before Pythagorean ever thought of it, because the Rabbanu created the world with that theorem. He may have not called it Pythagorean, but he had that theorem in there. It's a mathematical theorem that God created. It took somebody to come along and reveal it, but it's in the Bria. God created this in the Bria. Lest we think that somebody woke up this morning with a new idea, something that God never thought of. Unbelievable. Somebody woke up this morning and had this great idea, and God never even thought of it. Lest we have such an idea, we need to understand that every idea is already created by the Rebbe Shalom during Sheshis, Yemei, Bereshis. But so this idea that there's such a thing called evil, there's such a thing called imperfections is an idea that God needed to create because God is perfect. There's no evil in him. Again, when I say in him, I'm not talking about him because we're not allowed to talk about him. But there's nothing evil there and there's no imperfection there. So all these things are ideas that are created and they could have been left as ideas. Other Mauritian could have left them as ideas and walked away from them. But he took the ideas, put them in a plant, watered them, and from there blossom actual evil and imperfection in the world. In a himsi say the Chodesh Mamish, the bottom of page, Lamed Zayin, a himsi say the Chodesh Mamish, the Lokitas Ashlemus for Elyon Baruchu, the world that we live in is not in any way related to its perfectness. Elamad, the Tzricha, turning to page Lamed Fest, Libriyasa, God created that which is needed at the level of humans. What will the human need in order to have proper Bechira, in order to be able to earn Schava Onesh? And God, in his ultimate wisdom, has a plan. These are the things that need to be created so that the system of Bechira and Schar and Omish operates. And all the system was created so that man can get Schar at the end. So Ramchal is telling us a tremendous yisoy here. And our Friedlander explains in footnote 78. I'm going to take a look now at footnote 78. At the beginning, when God created the world, there was a complete balance between evil and good. And man is created into the system where evil 
and good have equal strength. They have equal power, so that this way there's a balance. And when man makes decisions, other Marish is going to make decisions, he begins in a state of balance. Neither good nor bad can overpower him. He's in a state of izun. He's balanced. Ulam ali de chet other Marishan. However, because of the chet other Marishan, his skapa rava kilko. What did other Marishan do? He's completely balanced. Ra and tov. And he's there to make decisions. He eats on the etzadas tov ra. What did he do? He pushed down the scale of ra. He made the ra more powerful than the tov. And because now the ra is more powerful than the tov, what's the next thing that's going to happen in his life? He may well do another Aveira because his izun, his balance is off now. He empowered the Ra. Besides eating from the Eitzadas Tova Ra, which was Naveira, he now gave evil additional power in his life. And now the Tov, the good, is fighting an uphill battle because he just gave more power to Ra in his life. And the person needs to understand that. Besides doing an Aveira, which is putting your hand in fire or drinking bleach, God says that you can't do this. And then we complain to God why things happen to us. They happen to you because you drank bleach and you put your hand in the fire. But besides that, you actually weaken your tov because you've empowered the Ra. And that's the concept in the Pirkei Yavis, Aveira, Goreris, Aveira. You should know if you do one Aveira, it's going to lead to another Aveira. Why? Because one Aveira pushes the scales down on the side of Ra and empowers the Ra in your life. And now, Chas Rishon, a person will come to do another Aveira. So Rav Friedlander continues at the bottom. He says, V'chei Mosef kochet kagboris l'ra. Every time a person does an Aveira, he gives more power to the Ra, not only in his life, in the whole world. V'chol b'chira betov machlisha sara. Every time someone activates his b'chira and makes a decision, and the decision is the correct decision, he weakens Ra. So you have a balance. Person Moyaleu did an Aveira. The Aveira has consequences, but the Aveira also empowered the Ra in his life. Now Aveira Goreris Aveira. A person does mitzvahs does, or does tshuva, he now weakens the Ra, and the Ra comes back up. It's not that heavy anymore. And a person's constantly trying to get himself back into a state of Izun, and when he gets to the highest state, eventually gets rid of the scale of Ra altogether, but we're way, way beyond before that. Okay, back to Ramchal. Val pi haderech hazeh nimtza, four lines on the top. Val pi haderech hazeh nimtza vriyas miskalkulais l'pam, miskalkulais l'pam, because of this balancing situation, sometimes the evil side goes down and a person brings himself to ruination. And sometimes he learns Torah, does mitzvahs properly, and he rectifies the Yisun, and the the uh, the Ra weakens. That eventually the Rabbana Shalom will terminate the whole concept of evil, concept, terminate the Eight Sahara at a point of time where we've done the work we need to do for that Gile Hayyihud and bring about, to the extent we can, a balance back into our lives where we weaken the Ra. And what, when we do to, to weaken the Ra, the Rabbana Shalom says, Mashiach, to complete the job. And these are the Psukim that the Ramchal just quoted. And this is based upon Chazal and Brok Islam and Gimel. God controls everything. He controls whether you're going to be tall or short, strong or weak. The only thing that God doesn't control is your Shemayim, the way you learn Torah and the way you do mitzvahs, which is under the broad category Yir Shemayim. Why did the Why did Gemara say Yir Shemayim? Why did the Gemara say Hakol B'day Shemayim and puts me Torah mitzvahs? Very good kasha. A footnote has a mimer on this, but the 
the, uh, the words, Yira Shemayim, your fear of heaven, means all your Torah and mitzvahs. Everything is controlled by God, except your Torah and mitzvahs, Yira Shemayim, which is the way Chazal phrased Bechira. Shein HaKadosh Baruch Hu roitz al-Akev klum biyad b'nei ha'odam and roitz al God basically doesn't stop a person if he makes a decision that he wants to bring imperfection into his life. He wants to bring evil into his life. God opened the world for that. You have Bechira and you have the consequences. And from here, from man's choices, we look up at God and say, God, what kind of evil world is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? Okay. You made some choices here, my friend. You put your hand in a fire. You put your, you drank bleach. The problem with the marshal that I'm giving you is that the physical world is understood by us. And the spiritual world, for many people, just may be pamby. So, yeah, I understand that. If I drink bleach, I will burn my insides because I even read it in a book and I even saw somebody in a hospital ward that had taken some bleach and he's in a hospital, serious condition. And yeah, I, I believe that if you put your hand in a fire, you will burn because I've seen people with severe burns. I've seen what a sun can do in a sunburn, how painful it can be. So I see it. I can touch it. I can feel it. I believe in it. But this spiritual stuff, you know, if you eat chazer, it's like drinking bleach. People eat chazer, their insides don't burn out. People violate Shabbos, with no ramifications. The reason the Rav Shalom does this is because for Bechira, if every person that ate chazer, every Jew that ate chazer suddenly had a massive heart attack, and the word got out, Jews who eat chaza suffer massive heart attacks, there'll be no Bechim left, nobody be eating chaza. The Rebbe Shalom wants the world to remain a world of Bechim, where you make choices. We don't, we don't appreciate the fact in our own emuna that when God says, don't do this, that's bleach. When God says, don't do this, it's a fire. We don't fully appreciate that because we need to see it with our eyes. If I saw someone that ate chaza, that had to be sent to the hospital because the chaza burnt out his insides, yeah, 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 then I would believe. That's not the way the Olam Haruchni works because the Olam Haruchni, you have to have Bechiru. But even in the physical world, as I mentioned earlier, people don't believe. It says all over the carton of cigarettes, you smoke, you die. You walk into the store, it says you smoke, you die. And people still don't believe it. You can take them into a hospital and walk them through a lung cancer ward, and they see people on machines, and all these people, well, many of the people were chain smokers, and you see they're connected to machines. They can't breathe on their own anymore. And say, it's not going to happen to me. See, even in the physical world, people are in self-denial. In the physical world, people say, it's not going to happen to me. In Kalvachoyma, in the Ruchnius world, people say, I don't see people going to the hospital. I don't see Jews having to go to the hospital because they lit up a cigarette on Shabbos. I don't see Jews going to the hospital because they ate Gaza. And if people are able to be in self-denial <laughs> over smoking, where you can go into a hospital and see the ramifications, they can be in self-denial about the ramifications of what they do in their Ruchnius lives. <clears throat> Tzadikim have no rest in this world. We'll stop here for today. We'll explain this on Sunday about the Tzadikim and HaKadosh Baruch Medaktik in Chassid HaKadosh Even Tzadikim uh, can't find peace and quiet in this world either. Why is the Rav Shalom let them have peaceful lives? Okay, so we're going to learn about that on Sunday.